Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book haul. Uh, the books that I'm going to be talking about are those that I bought on my most recent trip to the Bookworm in Surf City, New Jersey. I'm happy that I made a visit again there because I am on really... Uh, Julie is such a great bookshop owner, and she has such a great and unique uh, book collection at her store. And it always seems like there is a new batch coming in and all different kinds of books that you don't always see at other places. So I thought I would share with you what I got. I got eight books, four nonfiction and four fiction. We're going to start with the nonfiction. The first one that I got is Pigtails, an omnivore's quest for sustainable meat by Barry Estabrook. And Barry Estabrook is a three-time James Beard Award winner. Uh, he's written about uh, the mistreatment of food or the product it, that is used to make food, uh, whether it be uh, plants like the tomatoes in Tomato Land or uh, the pigs in Pigtails. Uh, this has to do with the pork industry. Uh, the mistreatment of the pigs. And then also, it talks about how you can properly uh, slaughter the pigs and serve them uh, in a humane kind of way. Uh, humane in quotation marks because uh, this is the practice of killing an animal for food. Next book that I got is Poseidon's Steed, the story of seahorses from myth to reality by PhD uh, Helen Scales. Uh, Poseidon's Steed has to do with, as the cover states, uh, just seahorses and their impact on uh, on the world, uh, having to do with the the seahorse as a creature and in turn what uh, how it inspired uh, mythology and uh, just anything you would want to know about uh, seahorses and uh, Dr. Scales is pretty uh, well-versed in the creature, so I'm really interested to hear what she has to say. I'm really getting into collecting books, uh, micro-histories, or books about a particular species. Uh, I have two books about the octopus. I got something about lobster, tuna. I got Mark Kurlansky's cod. And so, uh, something about seahorses should be right up my alley. Next one that I got is Walking the Bible, a journey by land through the five books of Moses by Bruce Filer. And I just find it fascinating, anything having to do with the Bible and its place in history. So it's really interesting to see Filer... Uh, taking a trip out to areas that were mentioned uh, through Moses' journey. Yeah. Some of the adventures that uh, Filer goes on in this book include uh, uh, crossing the Red Sea, uh, uh, climbing uh, Mount Sinai, and also touching the burning bush. Uh, so it's really, I'll be really interested to see uh, how he went about doing this, and uh, what I get out of uh, his experiences. I think that anything of this nature uh, is bound to be fascinating. Next book that I got is something that uh, had my attention for quite some time. Uh, I picked up a few other books pertaining to uh, Supreme Court justices. So... Uh, Stephen Breyer's Making Our Democracy Work, A Judge's View, has 
caught my attention for quite some time, and I finally decided to pick it up. It will be really interesting to see what his perspective is on the Justice's uh, position in interpreting laws. Uh, Breyer was a Bill Clinton appointee, so I'm not, I don't, some of his decisions I don't necessarily agree with, in particular the, uh, his stance on the Affordable Care Act, but my goal is just to be as objective as possible when it comes to anything political, and that includes Supreme Court justices, and so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. And it was also interesting that uh, there was somebody that was there uh, buying a book who actually went to Harvard and Stephen Breyer was his uh, instructor. The next four books that I got are fictional. The first one of that nature that I got was Fat City by Leonard Gardner. Uh, has to do with a working class environment, but it particularly follows uh, uh, an inactive boxer and, and a novice who uh, form a friendship with one another and end up getting into uh, boxing. Uh, the former is making his way back into the sport itself. I'm just interested to see uh, what uh, a novel like this has to offer, and uh, New York Review Books is a publishing company that always catches my attention, despite the fact that uh, these trade paperbacks can be a bit pricey. Next thing that I got was the complete short stories of Mark Twain. This is definitely something that's worth owning if you are into uh, American literature and the classics in particular. Uh, I have a few books by Mark Twain, but this is every uh, thing that you need to have when it comes to short stories. This is every short story that he's written. Perhaps we will go over one or many of those short stories in future discussions on Literary Gladiators. Next book that I got is The Red-Haired Woman by Orhan Pamuk. And much of the reason that I got this is because uh, Orhan Pamuk has become a favorite author of mine. If I come across one of his books, there's a good chance that I'm going to purchase it. And... This is his newest book. It has to do with a boy who has his attention grabbed by a red-haired woman uh, and the fascination that she has to offer. I'm really uh, intrigued to see what takes place within this novel. Uh, with Pamuk, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be something spectacular. And the last book that I bought is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. And part of the reason that I got this is because I was looking at lists of potential Man Booker nominees for both Man Booker and Man Booker International. This includes winners, shortlisted, longlisted, and perspective selections. And this was a speculated selection. Uh, but this... From what the, the sum, from what the summary says on the back of the book, it has this uh, literary uh, mystery to it. Uh, it's a bit of a noir kind of work. It has to do with a father, a daughter, and this mysterious man who is supposed to be a helpful asset. When the daughter's father disappears at some point in time, uh, she returns to this man. Uh, he, while he's enigmatic, he's supposed to be important to uh, her life and what she needs to know. And she approaches him for answers about what uh, had happened to her dad. So these are all the books that I bought while I was at the bookworm. I'm hoping to make at least one more visit during the summer. And 
they had so many things that I had to be smart and narrow it down a little bit uh, because I'm going to be I'm looking to uh, read what I have right now uh, because there's a lot that I have to get to but I think I had a really good trip to the bookworm I definitely want to go back if you're in the if you're visiting Long Beach Island at any point in time in New Jersey I highly encourage you to visit the bookworm in Surf City thank you for tuning into this video I hope you check out some more videos from our channel and for now keep reading